Hi everyone, welcome back once again. So today we are going to cover the topic that is how to copy data from one text file to another file. Okay, and for that we are going to use the read method. So actually we are going to see a various approach of doing that. Okay, so we are going to use the read method and uh, then we are going to use the read line method using the read method and then using the read line method and the write method and write lines method. So we are going to uh, see around uh, three approaches how we can do that, okay? So basically we'll be copying a data from another file and we'll be storing it in, uh, you know, copy that data into some another file, from one file to another file, okay? So in my previous tutorial already, you know that we are using a data file that is a text file which I have stored on D colon. So I'll just show you that is a text file that we have that is info.txt. So here it is, we have a text file. And uh, now what we are going to do is we are going to copy this entire file and create a new file and copy this data into that. Okay, so I'll just keep this open. And uh, now what we need, we need to do is we basically require two file handlers. Okay, the one file handler we require to read the file. And one more file handler we require to write into the file. Okay, so I will just have that is a file handle read, that's the name of my handler. And then I will just open the file, which is on the D colon. So I'll say D colon, that is name of the file is info.txt. Now this is the same file that I showed you that is out here. So this is the info.txt file and this is the data. Okay, so I'll open this file in read mode. Why read mode? Because we need to read the data from this file and then we need to copy the data or write the data from this file to some another file. So basically we'll, do, we'll be doing the reading from this file and then we'll be doing writing onto the another file. So we have uh, another, that is a file handler, that is a file handler write and this is file handler read. Okay, so this is we are going to use this handler for reading the file and this handler for writing the file. So for example, I will create a new file that is test.txt, okay? And this mode that I've give is into the write mode. So you can see over here, I'm reading this file. I'm opening this file in read mode, okay? And uh, the second file that I'm opening, it is into the write mode. So basically, I'll be reading data from this file and I'll be writing that data into this test.txt. You can give any name out here, okay? And then what we will do is actually, you know, uh, copying data from one file to another file is absolutely very easy task. And as far as Python is concerned, it is, it is super easy. You know, it, uh, the things that we can get done in Python is much more faster and is uh, much more easier as compared to any other programming language, okay? So what I need to do, I need to use a file handler that is read, so I will read the data from this file and give it to S by using the method that is read, so simple. So this method will basically read the entire data and it will uh, return that into the variable S. So S will have that entire data that is in form of a string, okay? And then what I need to do, we need to have use the another file handler that is uh, file handler write dot and then the write method and just simply pass that string to this. Okay, and then I will just close this file and close the another file that is the write file that I've used. Okay, so I've closed all the files. Now let us just run this program. We won't see any output because we are just performing the data. We are just reading the data from one file and we are storing that into the another file. So we just run this and see whether we can get the output. Okay, now we have run the program. Now let us see the output. That is, we need to open this file. Since I have not given any, any directory over here uh, where I have supposed to store this, so this will get created in the current directory. Isn't it? So let us just open this and I will search for the file that is test.txt. And you can see over here, this is the file, the text file, the text document that got created. If I open this and here it is, this is the exact file that was, we had the data 
that we had into info.txt and this is my info.txt you can see the both the files are same so i copied the data from this file and i stored it into uh, text uh, the text.txt okay so we have successfully done that so you can see how easily we can copy data from one file and can write the data into another file now another approach that we can have is having read lines so if you remember in my previous tutorial i have told you that read lines basically reads all the lines and it will return a list so i just for the convention pro purpose i'm just giving this as l okay so this indicates like it's a it's a list okay so uh, so i need to pass that so i'm reading that entire data from that file okay and i'm storing it in l and it will return l will be basically a list and the items of those list will be the will be the lines so the first line will be the first item in the list the second line will be the second item or element okay and so on so and then for writing that particular list onto the another file i need to use the function that is write lines okay and what i will do is i will give this time is this i'll create an another file that is test dot test two dot txt okay so let us run this file and see the output now we have done it and now let us check for the text file that is test dot two that is test two okay so you over here you can see so you can see the output it is exactly the same output the same data we have written into the another file that is test two dot txt okay so so easily you can do this now one more approach that we have is using a loop and uh, using a loop will be reading data line by line and then we'll be writing that line by line we'll be writing that data into another file now how to do that okay so what i'm going to do is just put this everything into uh, you know make this as a string okay that is a doc string kind of it's a, it, it is a doc string so now what i need to do is i have this a variable and i'll just give a blank space over here i just want that my while loop should turn true for the first time so if i just give while s so this will be true okay so there is a blank space over here so don't just give an empty string okay just remember this and uh, then what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the file handler that is read okay and uh, then that is read line so this will basically only read the first line and it will return that as a string okay and then once i have the first line i will use the second handler for writing so file handler over here it is underscore that's the name of my handler then dot write and i'll pass that as status Okay, so what will happen, this will basically read the first line, it will return to this, and then using the, the write method, I will be writing the data into this test2.txt. Okay, and then again the loop goes, if uh, there is the string is uh, not empty, again this statement will get executed. So what will happen this time? This time the next line will get executed. If you remember in my previous tutorial, I told you that when we, uh, the file handler, basically when you read a character or a line, Suppose you read this line, so the file hand handler reads the entire file and then it is pointing to the next line. So again, when this statement gets executed, so the next line gets read and then the file handler points to the third line and so on, right? If you're reading a character, so if you read just one character, so it will read that character and then the file handler will move the pointer to the, to the next character. So this is how it works, okay? So uh, line by line, we read the data and then we write the data into this using this file handler, which is uh, test2.txt. So I'll create a new file, maybe I'll you know, test4.txt. Okay, and then I'm closing the file, everything looks good. So let us see the output now. Okay, we have read it, we have done it. Now, let us see, that is text file. And here it is, test4 and the same output right so you can see how we created uh, three files using the three methods okay
Now, uh, you may ask the question that, you know, when the previous two approaches, in fact, the first approach that we had, uh, like the read function, and just read that data, you know, it will return a string, and that just write that uh, string into the another file. So it looks so simple. Then when we have such a simple approach, why would we go for this approach? Now, the reason behind this is, the first thing is, uh, let me tell you that when you read all the lines, this basically returns a list. Okay, it works fine and it will always work fine for in a normal situation. But when the text file is, your, your text file is really very huge, a huge text file. So in that case, this may not, you know, be the best approach. Why I tell you? Because all these variables, the program, it gets placed in the, our main memory. All the program gets executed in the main memory, which is the internal memory of our computer. So uh, there are many other programs that are working in the, uh, having place in the main memory. Okay, so in that uh, case, if you're reading a very huge file, so you know, so in that case, the memory problem can occur. So understand this approach. So uh, when your text file is really very huge, okay, so this approach may not be a good approach. Okay, so in that case, what you need to do is this, what we are doing is we are not reading the entire file. We are actually just reading this one line, one line of that file and returning that line. And then we are doing the writing onto the another file. So we are doing line by line out here. Okay, so maybe this, this execution time maybe take a bit longer, but it is, it is uh, the computer is so fast that it is absolutely, you won't uh, come to know the difference. Okay. So this approach is always the best approach, this I, I personally feel. And uh, second most uh, situation where you will be using this line by line approach is suppose you just want to, uh, you don't want to read all the lines from that file. You only want to read, uh, for example, if this is a file, uh, this is the same file, this is test four, but it's uh, even the info file is same. And I just want all the uh, lines which are starting with the capital P okay so I just want to store those lines so how will I do that okay so so simple if I read the first line and then what I will do is uh, this will return a string and so simple I just have to check the index value of string uh, so if I say s of 0 is equal to that is a capital P and only in that case I'll be doing I'll be writing that string into this new file okay so let us run this program and see the output okay this is equal to sign okay now let us run this program okay it says as out of index okay okay this is giving an error because there are few lines maybe a blank line so it gives an error so what I need to do is just give a function if len of of uh, s okay if it is not equal to zero okay if and the condition now let us see i'll just show you this how it works so, so what i did is i just gave uh, a condition that if len of s if it is not equal to zero why this uh, we had this error is because we had this blank spaces over here this one so this is a blank line so it will not return anything so the index value zero also does not exist so in that case it will it just throw an error so uh, the approach that I applied is just use the len of s. If it is not equal to zero, means there is some data, and then I will check whether s of zero is equal to p. Now we have uh, run the program, and now we need we need to check this file that is test4.txt. So test4.txt should have only the lines which start with the capital p. Okay. So let us see this approach. Okay. So this is have not given us the output. So, capital S of zero, and I'm writing it. Okay, let us create a new file. Okay, let me create a test file, and let us run this, okay? Okay, so now let us open the file, that is test file. And if there is any logical error, we will rectify that error. Now here it is, actually we have run the program successfully. So you can see over here that we have uh, this file which has the lines only starting with P, 
you can see out here okay so even if you open the text 4 I'm pretty sure we have the same data text 4 test 4 so that is uh, over here okay so this did not work but this should work actually test 4 I'm just closing that file one more time and now we will see the approach now let us open that it should work and uh, test 4 that is test 4 and here it is so it is working actually okay so we had only those lines which are starting with P so this is an, another um, approach that you can apply and this approach by using this approach you can do many uh, kind of many checkings inside uh, the loop if you want to particularly check for the line starting with P or anything else of that sort in fact you can do this approach using this read lines also because read lines basically returns a, a, you know it returns a list and then you can just uh, do the list traverser and check line by line but as I said that this approach okay is good for practice and for smaller text files also it works fine but if your text file is really very huge then I prefer this approach just read one line at a time and then write that particular line onto the next uh, into the uh, another file which is used for writing the data okay so this is how you're going to read data uh, from one file and you can write the data into the another file okay bye for now